Hey everyone, this is Nick, and since you gravitate in the Linux and free and open source software circles, you probably already heard about the terms Fediverse or Mastodon, PixelFed or Peertube. And whatever your opinions are on this whole Twitter acquisition thing, it makes it clear that it is vital to have social networks that are not owned by a single company or a single individual. And that's exactly what the Fediverse is. But what is it exactly? And how does its major components like Mastodon, PixelFed or Peertube work exactly? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. But first, we're going to discuss today's sponsor. Thanks to Duxcare for sponsoring this video. If you've ever worked on a project using Python, you know how frustrating it is to discover that the version you're using is going end of life and you're gonna have to speed through and hurry up to refactor and rewrite a bunch of code. Well, Tuxcare can now help you plan that transition thanks to their Python extended lifecycle support. With that new service, you can keep your existing code base and still receive security updates and patches to Python, even if that version is no longer officially supported. This means that if your code base is still working for you, you can still have it meet your security requirements and you can plan the transition to the new version of Python with a bit more peace of mind. So you can learn more about Tuxcare's Python extended lifecycle support by clicking on the link in the description below. Okay, let's start with a simple explanation of what the Fediverse actually is. Fediverse is a contraction of federated universe. It's basically a giant network of servers that form a social network. But contrary to the ones you might be used to, like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and others, the Fediverse is composed of different services, from microblogging to image sharing, video platforms and more. So you can think of it as a mega social network that regroups multiple platforms, as if Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and all others had fused into an interoperable blob. A thought that is extremely scary and creepy if you think about one company controlling all these social networks, but something that is actually really cool when it's all free and open source and decentralized. So, the Fediverse is made of many different services. The more well-known are Mastodon, a Twitter-like microblogging service, Peertube, a YouTube-like platform, or PixelFed, an Instagram-like social network. But there are a ton of others, like Diaspora, which is more like Facebook, or even WordPress for building websites, Castopod for hosting podcasts, or Bookworm for talking about books, and a lot more. Each service is also decentralized, which means that there is not one big server farm where everything is hosted. Each service is split into instances, basically independent servers with different goals. On Mastodon, for example, you have instances that are general, like Twitter would be or instances that are specialized around a specific topic, hobby, or community. When you create an account on Mastodon, you don't create a general Mastodon account, like you would create a Twitter account. You make an account on a specific instance, each of which have their own rules for moderation and who can get in or not. The same is true when you create a PixelFed account or a Peertube account. You make an account on one specific instance. But what a lot of people don't understand at first and what's really awesome is that this account on one specific instance doesn't mean that you can only talk to people from that instance. If your instance is federated to the whole Mastodon network, for example, then your account on that instance lets you interact with, follow and talk to anyone else that is also federated to the whole network. For example, my account on Mastodon is on the mastodon.social instance, but I can talk to the Thunderbird team whose account is on the mastodon.online instance. Those are two different servers, but we can talk to each other as if we were on the same one. It's all transparent and you don't need to do anything specific for it to work. You just search for the account you want to follow and you follow it. Now, in reality, it's a bit more granular than that. Certain servers can decide to block other servers. So guys from these blocked servers can't interact with you and you can't interact with them. But in general, most instances are federated to the whole network. And so with one account on one server, you can talk to anybody else that is on another server. But where it gets even more awesome is that all the different services like Mastodon, PixelFed or Peertube can talk to each other thanks to the ActivityPub standard. 
Activity Pub is an open standard endorsed by the W3C, which is the organization that works on web standards. What it does is let all services on the Fediverse talk to each other. Now, how does that work? Well, in practice, it means you can use your Mastodon app to follow a Peertube channel or someone that posts pictures on PixelFed or see new articles from a WordPress website. It's very basic. Every time my account posts a picture on PixelFed, for example, it creates an activity that is then sent to everyone that follows my account wherever they follow it. It can be on the PixelFed mobile app or website or on a Mastodon app anywhere where they support the ActivityPub format. That's also why on the Mastodon app, if you look for Thunderbird, for example, you will see multiple accounts. One is their Mastodon account, the other is their Peertube account, and the third is the channel they created on that Peertube account. And this goes a bit further. For example, if I comment on Mastodon on a post from Peertube, that comment will also appear on Peertube underneath the video. All services are interoperable like that. The TLDR, or TLDW for too long didn't watch, is that you can basically follow anyone from any Fediverse service with your account and your app from any other service. You can basically just create one Mastodon account and start following people that post pictures on PixelFed, people that post videos on Peertube, and people that write posts on Mastodon. One account and you get access to everything. You don't need to juggle three or four different apps, go in and out of them. You can just follow everyone in just one place. So now let's see how the biggest services work. And we'll start with Mastodon. Mastodon is basically Twitter, but open source and decentralized. It lets you post messages with up to 500 characters. It supports images, videos, polls, content warnings, animated avatar pictures, emojis, links, mentions, hashtags, anything you're used to on Twitter. Mastodon has 1.5 million active users, probably more since this video has been published, which might seem small compared to Twitter, but it's more than enough to have interesting conversations with a lot of people. To join Mastodon, all you need to do is pick a server, also called an instance. The main one is mastodon.social, but there are a ton of others. Some are generalist servers where people talk about anything, some are focused on tech, gaming, journalism, art or music. You can pick any server you like and it will let you interact with everyone else on any other server. As long as the server you picked is federated, so connected to the whole Mastodon network, but most servers are. Some servers will let you join outright and some will need you to apply for an account, a process that is in place to ensure people joining aren't here to troll or harass others. And each server has its own moderation rules, some are super open to anything and some moderate more heavily. So once you picked a server, just create your account or wait for your application for an account to be accepted. And then to access it, all you have to do is type the name of your instance in your browser's URL bar. For me, for example, it's mastodon.social, but for you, it might be different. Or you can also use their mobile apps. On iOS and Android, they have an official Mastodon app, which is the one I use, but there are also a ton of alternative clients, if you prefer. Now, let's talk about Peertube. It's a YouTube alternative, although it's much, much smaller. It's developed by Framasoft, which is a French organization that has tons of cool free software and online services and works to promote FOSS. Peertube is also decentralized, being split into different servers that are federated together, so you can follow people from different instances and still have a complete subscription feed. Of course, it's free software and it also works on a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. When people watch the same videos as you, they also help the server deliver that same content to you by sending a few bits of the video to you as well. So the load on the main server isn't too high. In practice, it works just like YouTube does. You can watch content without an account or with one. And if you have an account, you can subscribe to various channels and have a subscription feed and notifications. If you want to follow me, I'm on the Tailvids instance. The link is in the description as well. And as a creator, it also lets you sync your YouTube channel to Peertube. So you can auto-publish all your videos to Peertube in a few clicks, which is also a great help. To watch Peertube, just type the address of your instance in your browser's bar. For me, it's tilvids.com. They don't have official mobile apps yet, but you can always use the Mastodon app to subscribe to Peertube channels 
and use that as a subscription feed if you want. Obviously, you will not get ads before, during, or after videos there, but you will still get my sponsored segments, because, well, it's basically a copy of the YouTube video on Peertube. But if you like the idea of Peertube, follow the link in the description below, or just click another link that I left in the description below to find the instance that you want to get in. Another cool service on the Fediverse is PixelFed. It's basically Instagram without all the crap they tacked on lately, like Reels or Lives. It's just pictures and videos. It's free software. It also uses the activity pub standard, so you can follow pixel fed users on Mastodon, for example, and it's ad free. It also lets you add filters, just like Instagram, or crop, resize, add alt text, and you can use hashtags, locations, or create collections, which are basically photo albums. And just like Mastodon or PeerTube, pixel fed is split into instances that can talk to each other. I use pixelfed.social, my handle there is TLE Nick. You can find the link in the description, but there are plenty of other instances you can join if you prefer. Pixelfed is pretty small as a social network because it's not super well known, but there are still plenty of amazing and beautiful pictures to see from people that you might know or not know. If you want to access it, just like with any other federated service, you can just type the name of your instance in the URL bar. For me, it's pixelfed.social, or you can use applications on your mobile phone. There's Pixel Droid on Android and the official PixelFed one on iOS, which is still in beta, so you will need to install TestFlight to get it. Both links are in the description below. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. There are tons of other services you can use. These three are just the ones I use personally. And since it's all free software, if there is no server you trust with your data, you can also host your own. Since it's all federated, just because you have your own instance doesn't mean you can't talk to anyone. You can still follow people from any other instance or any other service, and other people can still follow you from anywhere. And most services on the Fediverse feel really good to use, sort of like what the internet and social networks were meant to be. Decentralized, open, modular, talking to each other, and not controlled by giant companies locked down and shoving ads and algorithms down your throats. Now, of course, there are not a complete replacement for traditional social networks, because you will not find everyone you usually follow on these Fediverse services. But I still think it's really worth it to give them a shot. So, as I said, all my accounts on the Fediverse are in the description below, and if you want a more complete list of services that are part of that Fediverse, I also left a link to a website that lists a ton of various services. So, have fun with all the things you can do, find some cool people to follow or talk to, and enjoy social networks as they were meant to be. And you can also enjoy this segue to today's sponsor. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany, and they make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box, and they ship worldwide. Now, when you buy from Tuxedo compared to buying from any regular Windows PC manufacturer, you basically remove all the guesswork on whether things are going to work or not. You can slap any Linux distro on it and it's gonna work out of the box. And if there are a few configs or tweaks needed here and there, they have PPAs and repos that you can add to make sure that everything just works perfectly. And their whole range is pretty big with devices for every price point and every need, whether you want a workstation, a small ultrabook, the cheapest laptop or computer you might want, you have everything and you have options to configure them with RAM, CPU, GPU, SSD, or even logos on the lid of your laptops, or even engraving your own custom keyboard layout on the keyboard of your laptop, for example. So if you need a new device and you want to run Linux on it, and you want to support Linux's development, click the link in the description below and buy a tuxedo laptop or desktop. They're really, really good. Now, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to ring the bell, to write a comment, anything else you might want to do. And if you didn't like it, well, there's also a dislike button that you can click, but please tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to help me make more of these videos, well, you can. You can click the super thanks button underneath the video on YouTube. There's a PayPal link in the description of the video or links to my Patreon account and YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast on Monday where I talk about Linux, open source, technology, the channel, or the platforms, my personal life, anything. Or you can also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover for the next month on the channel. 
So if you're interested, both links are in the description below. In the meantime, thank you all for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.